Hello fellow flight simmers. After posting my first video of my quote unquote home cockpit, which obviously isn't this one, this one was actually a 737 which the captain was nice enough to let me sit in his seat and he actually took the picture of me so I thought that was pretty awesome. This is actually what I have right now, what I have built. Um, and I've gotten a couple of questions regarding how I'm doing things and how to get these things done. And all this information and the whole project can be found on simvim.com. Um, he has so much information on there, I highly recommend reading it. But for me, it all started with an Arduino and a couple of switches. Um, I started when it was still Art Sim X, but I quickly moved over to SimVim because it's much better to use. And originally, I was just going to build the lower part of the overhead panel of the Boeing 737, which includes all the lights and everything, the engine start switches and the APU. So I got about and started wiring up the ground wire for all my switches and um, started making all those connections. And then I continued, I started wiring the signal wires, which is basically the positive for each one of the switches. And uh, I was going to route that over to where I have the Arduino uh, on the side of my computer desk. So after I finished wiring this up, this is what the Arduino looked like. Uh, as you can see, there was uh, probably around 24 wires going to the Arduino just for the overhead panel which uh, once again is the one in this picture here um, so I started thinking you know if I'm gonna keep on building things and putting more switches and stuff inside it's gonna get pretty messy pretty quickly and I can show you on this picture here after I started putting a couple more things you know I started using up a lot more of the inputs on the Arduino eventually um, I ended up over a course of a few months I ended up with this which obviously you can tell some of them are SATEC panels and the tops the top section plus a couple of other things that are on the lower uh, right close to the yoke are something that I put myself in there also so I started finding out about using these little 16 channel multiplexers which allow you to connect 16 buttons or switches onto one of these little boards and then you just have to take the signal wires to the bus um, so I soldered on these little these little things so that I could just insert the wires and take them off as needed I didn't have to actually solder them to the board themselves the wires and I was gonna use an ethernet cable like this to make my distribution boards for the bus now the bus is what where everything comes together all the signals from all the little multiplexers boards so they were gonna look kinda like this and then I was gonna use an ethernet cable to go from this to the Arduino and I can just keep it connecting more and more little boards onto this but I started noticing that it was gonna get pretty messy pretty quick even this way so right here I just set up a screen, a push button, and an encoder, you know, using two, two little multiplexer boards in my little distribution center. But I didn't like the way that was going, so I decided to make myself these little boards uh, in which I soldered. Each one of these rows is linked together, you know, they're all electrically connected, so I can just keep on inserting um, the signal wires going to the different little 16 channel multiplexers and then I can um, I can just come and join everything together here and then from this little board I would have only one set of wires going to the Arduino um, so this right here is what it looks like um, I built this little test panel with a button and an encoder and a rotary switch and a analog uh, potentiometer but eventually uh, I wanted to build the autopilot panel so this is what I wanted to build but as you'll notice over the course of these of the video I never stop what I started with I always end up adding more things so this is what I originally started with when it comes to the MCP panel and I know it doesn't look like a real MCP panel but I just wanted the functionality to be there 
as I was still learning. So I started wiring my MCP panel. I brought a power line with a ground wire also. And I made these little, um, little mini distribution centers so I can connect all the negatives and all the positives that are going to go to each one of the encoders. And as I kept on wiring, it started looking a little bit more like this, which, um, you know, the more things I added to it, it just kept getting more and more complex. Um, but since I was doing it a little bit of a time, it was, it was still making sense to me in my head. Eventually, this is the MCP panel that I ended up with. I added um, the command switches, uh, control wheel steering switch um, buttons, the speed intervention, and a bunch of other stuff. Then I decided to build myself an EFIS panel, which is by far the most complicated little panel that I've built so far because as you can see, it has a bunch of buttons, a bunch of switches, um, and then also the master caution light. Um, so this is what it looks like from the back after I put all the switches in place but before I started doing the wiring. and. Uh, then I get to the wiring part and it starts looking a little bit messier but like I said in my head it still all made sense to me kind of knowing which one each one was going to be used for and once I hooked it all up together to the two little mux multiplexer boards which you can see in the background there um, it really looked like a mess but the only the brown wires that have all the multicolors in them are the ones going to the Arduino and this is what it looks like mounted on top of my radio panel and after this one I decided to build another one on the other side with a fire warning light and a couple of other commonly used switches that I needed um, but as as you can see I added up more buttons and things later too um, this um, fire warning switch and the master caution switch um, it has the light bulb is a 12 volt and then the switch is just a regular, you know, it goes the five volts to the Arduino that that it gets from the from there. So I learned a very valuable lesson not to put the ground wire for the light together with the ground wire that goes to all the buttons and switches because it really overheated the little multiplexer boards. So this is what it looked like after I finished. I added um, the wiper um, switch right there, and this is what it looks like. I'm sitting on top of my multi-switch panel, the, the SATEC one. And the last thing that I built, re just recently actually, I decided to build this um, for some of the small, you know, single prop airplanes. Um, so this was my last uh, addition to my project here. Um, but I think I'm still not done. Um, I'm going to think of something else to build later on, I'm pretty sure. But either way, um, this is what this one looks like once I started wiring it together again with one of the little multiplexer boards and um, here's a closer look at just the multiplexer board with all the wires coming into it and the multicolored wires that are here near the front are the ones going towards the distribution little block and this is how it looks like once it's all set up underneath my desk um, where it's going to be you know its final resting place and like I said before um, I didn't take a picture with this one but um, this is pretty much what my cockpit looks like right now but including that one that I just told you about right now and the whole distribution center and the Arduino and everything <clears throat> this is actually what it looks like right now which is extremely complicated um, obviously I want to eventually undo all the white wires that are going to the to the top panel. I want to put two multiplexer boards on that one and get rid of all those white wires and then I can have a lot more inputs so that I can use more multiplexer boards and add a lot more switches. Now some somebody had asked me if it's possible to use more than one Arduino and as far as I know with Simvin it's not possible and it's not necessary because you can keep using as many multiplexer boards as you have available inputs on your Arduino so technically you can you can put up to five six or maybe even seven hundred switches 
with uh, multiplexer boards so I think that um, hopefully this video helped somebody out there uh, that's starting to work on this project and like I said to one of the people that uh, commented on the previous video <clears throat> that said I wish I had the skill to do something like this honestly I do not have the skill I, I'm just barely learning I had never even messed around with an Arduino um, let's say three or four months ago before I started building this I have always been into electronics they have always fascinated me but I don't really have any real world experience I'm just learning as I go so I'm pretty sure that if I was able to build all this and get it working I'm pretty sure almost anybody can you do have to read you know the web pages on simvim.com um, they are very very instructive and very helpful so that's the best advice I can give you is read follow the directions closely and I'm pretty sure you can do it yourself alright well that's it for now thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it